Good day and thank you for joining CivilNet. Today our conversation is going to be uh, more about nature preservation, nature and wildlife preservation in Armenia, not so much, but in the region, the Caucasus generally. And my guest today is Joseph Alexander Smith, the Communications and Visibility Consultant for Caucasus Nature Fund. Welcome to Armenia and welcome to CivilNet. Thank you very much for having me. I'm always glad to come to Armenia. I love when, it, when I get an opportunity to uh, visit Armenia and I love being told go go to Armenia go and see what's happening and I'm always happy to be here. So, so thank what you usually much. brings you to Armenia? Uh, what usually brings me to Armenia is our ongoing uh, communications, the, the communication side of our work, uh, the work of the Caucasus Nature Fund. Uh, so I'm responsible um, for the uh, social media um, profile of CNF, um, for the media profile of CNF. So I, I um, guide people to the right information when we have questions from media. Uh, also the, the online content, I work on the blog for CNF. I also um, have other people um, contribute things to CNF. Uh, so yeah, I'm responsible for, um, for the communications of an organization which has been in the past a little bit more timid about saying what kind of stuff it's, it's doing. In about the that, mm. I know that the, the name itself is already telling, but what is the mandate of the Caucasus Nature Fund? What's the focus usually of the organization? So the focus, uh, the focus of Caucasus Nature Fund, um, and, I, and I guess what makes the Caucasus Nature Fund different from other um, donors in, um, in the environmental sector, is that we're a, Caucasus, uh, we're a nature trust fund. So we have an endowment, a huge amount of cash, which is invested in different places around the world. Uh, which obviously generates interest for us, which means that we can, um, our endowment hopefully continues to grow over time. And as our donors, which include the German um, government, uh, uh, as they, they, they build up this endowment, which allows us to um, have access to large amounts of money over a long period of time. So the idea of Caucasus Nature Fund is to um, offer long-term support for the protected areas. So there are, there are many kind of infrastructure projects uh, which happen in protected areas, national parks, uh, which involve building tourism infrastructure or, or refurbishing an, an uh, administrative center or like a ranger shelter. And then this ends. So they build it and then uh, five years later, ten years later, no ma maintenance has been done. There's an empty building which is unusable with a plaque saying which organization financed this uh, project and it's no longer um, viable, it's no longer usable infrastructure. Um, and so our aim is to do, I guess, the opposite of that, to come in, um, not to, with a, being very careful to only match, um, to match government spending. So in both um, countries where we have a program in Georgia and Armenia, we don't exceed 50% of, um, of funding from the government. So if we're working on, um, say, if we're, if we're working on um, increasing salaries of rangers, um, we make sure that we're not going to start paying, you know, 60% of their salary. We, we top up to a certain amount. Um, on infrastructure projects, we do similar things where we so try and So if the Armenian government allocated $50 million to the host of reserve, you would match that? We try, we try to, within our capability, to actually match that level of... Um, Funding. I can't tell you in the case of Hostel exactly yes, of if, it, if, um, if it's exactly that, um, if it's to that amount, but um, we um, always try to match rather than exceed government funding. And we hope that this shows that um, we're long term partners. Um, whatever you put into the system um, from, your, from your state budget side, um, we're a donor which will try and match that and will hopefully bring real, event, real results from that investment that you make. So what are concern areas in wildlife preservation and nature preservation that are common between in the region? Um, well, like you kind of hinting, I'm more, much more familiar with the situation in Georgia than I am with uh, Armenia. I, I live and I work in Georgia, so um, I'm much more familiar with the program there. But I'd say there are several things which are common um, to both um, regions in terms of threats to the protected areas systems. Um, infrastructure and investment is one of the main ones. I mean, this is... Um, starting a protected areas network is a big investment for a government. Um, it can be a very fruitful investment. That's what we're trying to, um, to uh, communicate to governments and to the public, that this can be a very fruitful um, and beneficial investment. So uh, it's worth investing in these areas. In the long term, um, the uh, preservation of these, uh, these natural landscapes in a kind of pristine form, um, the preservation and uh, 
monitoring of biodiversity, you know, different animal species which are, which are unique to this region can have huge benefits in terms of bringing tourists to the region, um, and so on. So that's, uh, so that's what I would say about, um, about encouraging governments to, to invest in, in the um, protected areas networks. In terms of the um, threats, there's a threat from, um, uh, the, our biggest threat is paper parks, so parks which are, which are on paper, which are government structures, but which actually have no, um, have no support, they're not actually working. Uh, the rangers are not doing their, not able to do their job properly, and the administration is unable to do their job properly. So all of our work in in the South Caucasus is aimed at trying to um, bring these parks to life, make them viable, make them sustainable in the long term. So uh, one thing that really excited me recently, and I discovered this shame on me relatively recently, as a lot of my friends did, the, the monitoring cameras in the Khostrov mm -hmm. uh, reserve where people started seeing rare species mm -hmm. that were thought to be extinct or have not shown, uh, have, uh, have not been seen for years. Now all of a sudden they're showing. I think the population of some species is growing drastically. Uh, this kind of you know, encourages me, and I didn't realize the problem until I saw this, like, there's 24-hour live footage, right, from uh, Hostel of Reserve. This is be, very yeah. uh, mm. exciting for me. So this brings me to the question, people's reaction to what you do, putting the news, the world, uh, the word out there, the information out there, communicating the problem and probably the solution as well. What's the general reaction? Is there a lack of... Uh, Sympathy, empathy in this case, what's going on. People usually in the area have so many other concerns. They're not, yeah. not going to worry about the goat just mm -hmm. now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's difficult. It's always a challenge, especially when you start the conversation by, I guess, like you start like I did, when you talk about money, and you talk about the structure and structural problems, I think it's very difficult for people to engage. But when you show them the results, and in Armenia, we had this very strong result. You mentioned the leopard, the video, the, the photo of a, of a leopard kitten um, you know, in, in Georgia, we're not entirely sure whether the, uh, the Caucasian leopard has, is actually extinct. Um, it hasn't been seen for a long time in its uh, natural habitat in, in Vashlovani. Um, and in Georgia, in, sorry, in Armenia, we believe that um, there's a much healthier um, population. And as you can see, there's obviously a breeding population. There's a young, new young leopard uh, spotted recently here in Armenia. Um, so when people, when we bring the results, People are very, very interested. I did a story about Ganeshik, um community managed protected area here in, uh, in Armenia, which is one of the protected areas that we support. And what's fantastic about that place is um, it has huge tourist potential. I think everybody knew this, but I think when it became a protected area and people became more interested in the biodiversity, it kind of doubled its popularity and it's the interest in Ganeshik and, and uh, we started to see links with with you know, other potential links for even for regional development. Um, I mean, that area is now developing a, a, pro, a, a profile as a wine growing region. I mean, I, I, it's, it's becoming increasingly. And there's a lot of talk about ecotourism now that could be something that could you know, be combined. Potential good, yeah, good it could be combined. For Armenia. I mean, it's, it's fantastic to know that in Armenia, and, and this is it's very rare actually in Georgia to have a similar situation, but to know that um, you know, a few years ago there was nothing there, there were no rangers. Um, poaching was an issue, hunting, I mean, depend, poaching, hunting is kind of, depends on the regulations that apply to it, but hunting was going on and uh, these, this Bezuar goat population uh, around um, Ganesha Karani region was um, under threat from poaching. And it's great to know that now that you know, the money that we've put into this protected area over a long period of time and the work, investing in the work that the rangers do, so topping up ranger salaries, and um, providing ranger um, equipment for them, patrol vehicles, which is something we do in the region. Uh, camera traps, which allow you to not only collect data, but also to show people the results, you know, or to, or to um, camera traps also really useful in, in starting prosecution for poaching. Uh, we've had a few cases in Georgia where a lot of the evidence used against poachers has been, has been um, uh, has, has come from is the lack of legislation or the right kind of legislation in this like helpful or uh, a problem at this point or something you w you would think about working th towards? In um, the we we don't specifically work on on legislation. Uh, generally, I think the, the the biggest problem is more the ability to implement um, implement uh, the protected area system um, legislation. Um, 
there's, there's not really a problem with legislation in, say, for example, Georgia. We have a big issue with uh, poaching. This is something which is uh, poaching of roe deer, which has happened in Lago Dechi and Borjo. I mean, there's been a few incidences. Um, this is something which we, um, the, the legislation itself is in place, but it's often difficult. You know, these are, these are regional, these are on the borders of, of the state. You know, they're kind of not necessarily close to uh, state structures. It's difficult sometimes to get um, um, prosecutions or to get, to get that case carried all the way through. Um, so I wouldn't say that legislation was a big problem for us. It's, it's more the ability and the, sust and the sustainability, um, the, the capacity of the ranger staff to start pushing for implementing. All right, thank you very much. Uh, good luck, and we'll be following the live feed, at least from Armenia. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure.